We sell mannequins, new and used mannequins. We rent mannequins. We repair mannequins. We blog about mannequins. Did I say we recycle mannequins too? Come on in. It's Mannequin Madness. Oh, wow. So do you want a torso? Do you want a full body? I could not have done this when I was younger because so many people look at me and think, mannequins, that's an odd way to make a living. Or you do what for a living? And my self-esteem could not have handled that. Now I love the wacky, whimsical quality of being the mannequin lady. And people sometimes call me, oh, you're the mannequin lady. Oh, you're a Miss Madness. You know, and I laugh about it. These are considered a high-end mannequin because these were sculpted after a real person. Yes. I was born in Brownsville, Tennessee, a very rural community. My uh, grandparents were farmers. And my father was trained as an electrical engineer. And at the time, it was very difficult for an African-American man to get a job, period, let alone as an engineer. So we moved to California because at the time, they had government contracts. It was just the beginning of equal opportunity. My whole life is different just because my dad was able to get a job in the aerospace industry in California. <laughs> So I worked for Johnson & Johnson for almost 10 years. I felt a little stifled. There was a part of me that was always much more creative than what the corporate world allowed. You know, I liked wearing bright colors, I'm much more expressive. I always wanted to do something creative, I wasn't quite sure what. It was the first time that I really had put my heart into something and didn't do well. So it was not only, you know, traumatic on a financial level, but emotionally too. I was only about 35 employees. I had never worked for a company that small. And that gave me a window to see what the key decision makers were doing. And that's when I realized these people aren't any smarter than I am, but they just have a lot more confidence. They were all men. Many of them had started businesses before and it failed. They burned through a lot of money and they just started a business again. It gave me the confidence to get back on the saddle again. I thought, ooh, I've always wanted a mannequin to put in my garden with some mosaic tiles. And I was overwhelmed. He had about 50 mannequins. And he says, now that I'm leaving the state, there won't be a place to rent a mannequin in the Bay Area. I had one of those Oprah aha moments. I thought, wow, the Bay Area is such a creative place. There ought to be some place to rent a mannequin. And fortunately, I have a very supportive husband. He said, go for it. I immediately started online marketing. The very first week our website went live, we got an email from someone from Canada who was coming to the Bay Area for a trade show and wanted to rent a mannequin. So that's when I realized, maybe there's something here. We started asking the stores, if you have mannequins to get rid of, let us know. And in six months period of time, our inventory went from 50 to 500 mannequins. We had mannequins in our basement, in our backyard, in our garage stalls. It truly was mannequin madness, hence the name. Here's why I like this. First of all, it has metallic arms, but more importantly, this one, if you drop it, it doesn't crack. And look at this nice, expensive looking oh, wrought iron stand. I like and this stand. can elevate. It has been an established practice in the retail industry to just throw mannequins in the trash when they're done with them. Well, mannequins are big, bulky, and they're made out of materials that do not biodegrade. We will come in and we'll take everything, regardless of what condition it's in, old, new, broken, whatever. We'll take truckloads of mannequins away. And then we recycle them. Not that we turn them into some other product, but we sell them as is. See, it has a little discoloration there. It had been out in the sun. I can go 50 on this. My goal is to be a million dollar a year business, primarily because most women businesses, and particularly most minority women business owners, don't ever get to that target. I just need that just to show that it is possible as a woman, a minority woman, to get to a million dollars and above, ideally. My husband and I are the only full-time employees. I tried the employee route. It's not my temperament. 
I like dummies that I can tell what to do. My mannequins, they do whatever I tell them to do. They don't argue, they don't talk back to me. That's my, <laughs> that's my business strategy. <laughs>